Hi everyone, my name is Glenn Bartley and I'm here today with another video blog. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about monitor calibration because it's such an important subject. And I actually just got myself a new uh, monitor calibration device here. This is the Spider 4 Pro as you can see and it's from Datacolor. I'll post a link uh, either with this video or at the bottom. Um, it's a good little unit. You can see it comes with a color measuring device here that we're going to stick on either our laptop or our, our uh, LCD screen here and that's what's going to measure the colors and decide if your colors are accurate and if they aren't, which they most likely aren't straight out of the box, it's going to create a custom ICC profile so that what you see on your screen would be very similar to what I would see on my screen or the photo lab would see. I just can't stress how important this is if we're going to spend all our hard-earned money and time out taking pictures and buying equipment and then if we're not going to actually calibrate our screens and process our images properly, it's kind of all a waste. So this is an, a crucial step and now I'll run you through the stages. We'll take a look at just exactly how this, uh, this product works. Okay, so let's go ahead and calibrate our display here. We're working on my laptop, uh, but this would be a very similar screen if we were working on an LCD monitor as well. Uh, you can see I've got the Spider 4 Pro uh, calibration software already opened up here. And it asks us for a few to do a few things before we get started. So it says, have we allowed the display to warm up for half an hour? Check, we did that. It asks us about our lighting conditions. So if we have any direct light that's coming in, could throw off the calibration. I made sure to close the blinds, so we should be good there. And it asks us to reset our monitor settings. Now, since I'm working on a laptop here, there's no real default color settings because all we really can control is the brightness, up or down. Uh, if you're working on an LCD monitor, you might try to get your uh, the, the main controls, the main settings, back to their defaults. So, for example, the RGB controls might be set at 50-50-50, um, brightness and contrast settings. You'll want to maybe Google those for your particular monitor and see what the default settings are. That's going to be your best starting point. Then it asks us to plug in the colorometer, the, the connection to the color calibrating device, and we've done that as well. So we'll go ahead and say next here. Now, since I've already calibrated this monitor, it's asking me if I want to recalibrate it, if I want to check the calibration, or if I want to do a full calibration. I'm going to pretend that I've never done this before, and I'm going to go ahead and say a full calibration. So now it says that we should put the calibration device on the screen, right where it's indicated, which is an easy enough thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to tilt the laptop screen back just a little bit so that gravity helps us out here and holds the calibration device right on the screen, right where we want it to be. And so I've got that position now. I'm going to go ahead and say next. Now the first thing it's going to do is it's going to start to measure the brightness of the screen. Now this is where there's a few interesting um, options. So sometimes people want to um, calibrate their their laptops to be a certain brightness to match their prints. So it's sort of a bit of a, if you're printing from home or if you have a particular lab you use, you might have to do some uh, tweaking here. In general, the darker the room you're editing in, you'll probably be able to get away with a lower brightness setting. If you're, if you're editing in a fairly bright room, you might have to uh, calibrate your monitor a little bit brighter. I've heard anywhere from, with a laptop, from 80 to 100 on the, um, the brightness measurement um, and on a LCD often people people make them something like around 110 and um, the measurement here is uh, it looks like CD per meter squared I don't know exactly what that means but it is what it is so we can see here that currently my display is at 77.7 .7 brightness and I was kind of hoping to get it up closer to a hundred maybe so I'm going to go ahead and turn the brightness of my screen all the way up to 15 and we will update the uh, brightness measurement here. Now we can see we're at over 120, so I'll put it down one, maybe to 14. Let's go ahead and update that now. And it's going to do another measurement. And there we go. We're at about 97. So that's pretty good. I, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll know that when I'm editing photos on my laptop that I want to have the brightness set on 14 and that's going to give me the best results. Then I'll go ahead and say continue. And now what's going to happen is the calibration software is going to run through a whole bunch of different colors. So now it's starting with whites and blacks, 
but it's going to go through a whole different array of colors and uh, color tones. And based on how those are being displayed and being measured by the device, it's going to come out with a custom ICC profile that it's going to automatically apply to my system. And that's going to allow my screen on this monitor to display colors the most accurate possible. So I'm not going to uh, let this run all the way through. You can get the idea that it's running through some shades of red right now. Um, I'll skip ahead in the video because this should take probably about five or six minutes and I'm sure we don't want to watch all of this. So let's skip ahead here. I'll join you back in a second here and we'll go ahead and look at what the finished calibration looks like. Okay, so once the calibration process is finished, the this is the screen that pops up and it asks if we want to save our profile. So um, I do want to save it. Um, I probably won't save this one because I've already calibrated it, but in any case, what I like to do is to give it a bit of a, a name. So I might say August 25th, 2014, and say something like brightness 97, I think is what we had, um, just to give me a reference point for where we were. So at this point, we could save our calibration, and it says that it's been set, and you can do a little thing. So that would be an uncalibrated monitor, and that is how it's now calibrated to. So it's giving us a good idea of what we're what we're actually achieving here. Now the cool thing with um, the cool thing with uh, this uh, Spider for ca uh, calibration software is it shows us what percentage of the different color spectrums we're seeing. So we can see here that the calibration that we just achieved is giving us 100% of the sRGB spectrum, and we can check it against the Adobe RGB as well, which is a more kind of a more uh, a larger color spectrum and we can see here that this monitor is actually getting 97 percent of the Adobe RGB color spectrum which is very good especially for a laptop that's the reason why I bought this laptop was because it has an excellent screen um, to be honest my desktop monitor doesn't even get results this good but it's kind of cool to be able to give yourself some kind of benchmark as to how much of the available color spectrum you're actually able to display on your newly calibrated monitor so that's about it. This, the software does allow you to run some different analysis and things like that, but to be honest, I'm not so sure that they would really be required for most people. This is, this is really the, the true measure. If you're, getting, if you're getting over even 80% of the Adobe RGB spectrum, you're probably doing okay. If you're getting less than that, it might be time for a monitor upgrade um, if that's something that might be in your budget. So we're just going to go ahead and quit here. We're all finished. And our profile has been applied. Sometimes I'll restart the machine just to make sure that everything's gotten applied uh, before I would start editing photos. But uh, in any case, I hope you found that useful. And I hope that you go and if you don't have one of these devices, go and buy one, calibrate your monitor. And thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.